Joe Kovacs, though, has been in brilliant form. He's won his last five competitions. Feels that 23 meters isn't far away. Goodness me, look at that. I'm gonna teach you how you can get wide in the back of the circle in the rotational shot put and discus, and we're gonna start right now. So a lot of throwers struggle with getting wide out of the back of the circle. And there's one key factor here that we have to bring up is why do we even need to do this? And what is the actual outcome that we typically see? So usually, okay, when young athletes get in and they start learning how to spin, they'll set their feet here. Maybe they'll go really, really wide, okay? Or maybe they go a little bit taller, a little bit more narrow like Reese Hoffa. But a lot of throwers tend to come out of the back of the circle, and as they come out of the back of the circle, they fall in, okay? So that left hip opens, if we're a right-handed thrower, that left hip opens, the shot's on our neck, or the discus is here, and we tend to fall in. And the problem that this creates is that there's actually less distance to travel. We sort of neglect the ability to rotate through longer space, through more space. So ideally, we have to figure out how can we actually rotate a little bit wider? How can we make everything wider so then we have a little bit more force when we enter into the center? And a lot of this goes back to one thought. I really like to think about everything as a trebuchet. And I know this sounds a little ridiculous, but if we can think about lever arms, okay? So we're here and this thing comes around and sends something flying. And I'm actually thinking about growing up, my neighbors were farmers and we actually used to use this catapult to shoot pumpkins. This is actually for real, okay? So one of the things that we would do is you would have this stationary thing and then you would load it up and after you loaded it up, it would launch pumpkins based off the trebuchet. Now, where I'm going with this is that I like to think about every single aspect as that, okay? So if we can get set here and this is that stable point, now that lever arm, that swinging arm is our right leg. So we want that to get wide. That's gonna help generate more force as we cut that to the center. So one of the easiest things that we can do in the shot or in the disc is to think about our sides, okay? Right side, left side. Dr. B used to say this to me, my Olympic champion coach, he'd always say, think about it in parts, think about it in sides. The right side, okay, goes around the left. So if we load, we wanna load the right, get some weight on this right. And we wanna push, okay, so there's a little flexion in the knee and a little flexion in the hip, okay? So we load, flex the hip, flex the knee, and then as we open, we wanna think push, okay? Because we have that knee flexion and because we have that hip flexion, that creates a stretch shortening cycle, okay? It actually shortens, and then we push and it extends, okay? That helps us rotate. Now. Where that takes us is that if we can go here and we can think about each point, okay? We can push and we wanna stay balanced on our left. Now, if you just look at what I just did, I'm back to the beginning, okay? So now, all we're looking for at the very least is that this position is exactly where we want to be when we go around the left, okay? So to get wide, think of it as a mirror, okay? So we're going real, real simple. But to do this, we've got to load flat-footed. We want to keep this level, okay? That's another big aspect is that a lot of people will load here, but then when we load here, we tend to open and come fall in. If we're not balanced, okay, we need to be as balanced as possible because if we're not balanced, we're gonna have energy falling into the circle instead of coming around the left and then forward into the circle. So the big key factors here, when we load, okay, hip flexion, okay, balance left arm, if we have the shot or the discus, we wanna feel that behind the hip, okay? Feel that behind the hip, feel the discus behind the hip, stay level, stay balanced, knee flexion, okay, hip flexion, and then as we open, we want this left heel to stay elevated. If that left heel drops, now we fall in because it doesn't enable us to rotate around. So there's a couple key factors. Another thing I really like to focus on is the left knee and left hip being a little bit more flexed as well while that heel is elevated. If this is extended, this tends to block this left hip here and we fall backwards. Okay, so there's a couple big things going on, but it all comes back to Balance left, okay, left arm's balance. Shot, implement, so the shot or the discus is behind the hip. Flexion in the knee, 
flexion in that right hip, okay? And then as we unload, okay? A lot of people, I wanna point this out, a lot of people will load like this, okay? So they actually extend like that right knee and it creates a crazy amount of hip flexion, which is cool. But the problem is then, as you unload this, as you come here, people tend to fall in then with the left hip because the right hip comes back too much. So I don't wanna see that full extension. I wanna see flex, flex in the hip, balance left, shot back, discus back, open level, open level, open level, left heel elevated, left knee flexed, left hip flexed, and now I wanna think, mirror this position. We can push that wide and then lengthen the right leg. We're gonna lengthen that right leg. Push, okay, when I get to about here for the shot, when I get to about here in the discus, push, and now we're mirroring, okay? So we mirror this position, and ideally what we're gonna end up doing then is that as we push, we have a bent knee that then extends right as we're passing this left leg, and we're gonna be dorsiflexed moving forward. And then that's gonna set up the entire throw. But the whole thing goes back to simplicity, okay? Thinking about it in parts, right side around the left side. Mirror that position that you're starting in, okay? Mirror that position here. And at the end of the day, I really think that that trebuchet thought process does help because that leads to that swinging lever here to the middle. Now the swinging lever is my left leg here. Now that swinging arm is my left arm. And now that leads to that finish. So that's three key aspects there. But it comes back to being balanced, hip flexion, knee flexion, ankle flexion there when you're loading that left knee flexion in the left knee, hip flexion in the left hip, and then doing that thousands and thousands and thousands of times without falling backwards. Some of the best examples that you can use as a model would be you know, Joe Kovacs, absolutely phenomenal. Gets that right leg very, very wide. Ryan Krauser gets that right leg very, very wide. Matty Denny in the discus gets that right leg very, very wide. So does Val Allman and so does Jessica Schilder in the shot put. So those are five very, very good examples that you can use as a technical model to help get that right leg nice and wide. Also, our own Alex Rose does an absolutely phenomenal job, but sometimes he does fall in with that left hip. If you guys need help, make sure you head over to throwsuniversity.com where you can pick up our elite throws-based training program to help you guys hit monster PRs. Until next time, peace.